you know, the high grade cosmic error force impulse gun does look pretty nice and all. I'll give it that. But I think I do have something that's a little better. ERG. Hey guys, it is Plastic Disaster, and today we are going to do the review of the RG Force Impulse Gundam. Now, if you're wondering what the RG stands for, it stands for real grade. And the real grade is designed to recreate the real thing with fine details and abundance of color parts, movable parts with the widest possible range of movements are equipped on a pre-assembled inner frame that are only required cutting out. And it offers the joy and excitement of building a bubble suit and numerous gimmicks packed in a palm size of one 144th model for all generations of Gundam lovers. Now, I know what you're asking. Where the heck did you find this information? I'll tell you. It says it right there. Under the name. The Force Impulse Gundam came from a series called Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Destiny, which is a sequel to Gundam Seed. I'm gonna have to skip the plot details on this one because if I would, um, I'm gonna have to explain what Gundam Seed is about before telling you what Gundam Seed Destiny. But I can tell you that it just takes two years after the first one. But if you wanna know what's my opinion on this show, I'm gonna be honest, it's not my favorite. But I do like all the mobile suits and all the Gundams in it. It's just that the lore and the characters just don't really interest me that much. And if you do like it, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe someday I'll give it a rewatch and my opinion will change on it. Now, if you've seen some of my past videos, you may know what the uh, real great box art would look like. And if you're new here, the real great box art will have the uh, close-up face of the uh, mobile suit and the full body shot of what it's gonna look like. That goes for every real great box out there. Taking a look at the uh, side of the box, we have the close-up face again, the inner frame, and uh, the core fighter, or the um, core splendor, I mean, how it goes inside the uh, inner frame. We got the uh, gimmicks and the uh, full body shot of the uh, Force Impulse Gundam. Moving on to the other side of the box, we have some cool poses and the back shot of the Gundam. Okay, so taking a look inside the box, we are greeted with one, two, three, four, five, and six bags of runners, and a manual. So taking a look in the manual, if you're not familiar with uh, real grade manuals, they're kind of like magazine style manuals and I'm not going to go through like every single page. I'm just going to go through like the highlights of it. Alright, so taking a look at this page, looks like we're going to be using all the parts. Um, let's see. Alright, we got some cool posters for the weapons up here. Uh, All right, right here, we get to see all like these uh, cool gimmicks right here, like you already saw in the box. And the back of the page is just, just shows where you put all those uh, marking stickers on the uh, Force Impulse Gundam. All right, starting off with Runner A is gonna be a multicolored part. We have parts for the, looks like the shield, beam rifle. We got some clear parts right over here, some yellow parts right over here. And I think this is uh, baby blue, if I'm correct. Yeah, it's light blue. I don't know why I just said baby blue. Runner B is gonna be a very, very tiny runner for the inner frame parts, and I believe those parts go in the torso or something. All right, runner C1 is gonna be all the white parts. We have, looks like we have parts for the shield and the head, uh, the V fin right here. Looks like uh, parts for the skirt armor, and looks like the parts for one of the jets. And you have runner C2, which is gonna be a copy of this section right here. All right, Runner D1 is going to be even more parts for the inner frame. Looks like we have parts for the, the legs and the thigh piece. And here is Runner D2, which is going to be a copy of this section right here. All right, Runner E is going to be the off-white parts. Now, the reason why I had to turn on these lights is because when I turn them off, it looks kind of gray. And we're 
gonna have two of these runners. And here is runner F1, it's gonna be all the red parts. Now, if you look right here, you see this big hunk of plastic is gonna be surrounding this part. Something tells me that this part right here is gonna be really fragile. So when I cut the parts out, I'm gonna be really careful. But anyways, these are the parts for the feet, and these are the parts for shield, and parts for the backpack. And for runner F2, it's gonna be a copy of this section right here. Here we have runner G1, it's gonna be blue parts. Now, the reason why there is no G2 is because there are other variants of the Impulse Gundam, so, which is, I guess that's the reason why it, they don't include like G2 or anything because it's P Bandai. But anyways, looks like we're gonna have parts for torso right here, and looks like we have like parts for the um, core splendor, if that's correct. And finally, we have Runner H, and it's all gonna be for the backpack for the Force Impulse Gundam. And let's not forget the beam sabers because, of course, it's a Gundam kit, it does come with beam sabers. And here we have our marking sticker sheet. Now, the reason why I had turned the lights on again, so you can see what the marking stickers would look like clearly. And these are optional if you want to put some decals on your Gundam. Okay, that wraps up the unboxing. And I am looking forward to putting this kit together because when it comes to modern real great kits, I heard they are very fantastic nowadays. So. I can't wait to put this together. I know I sound like a broken record. I'm just really excited. So anyways, I'll see you guys after the build. And here is the out of box build of the Impulse Gundam. Now, I had a lot of fun putting this together. Even though you're dealing with very small parts, the color separation is phenomenal. And what makes it even better is that it's pretty solid. Because when I first heard they announced this kit, I was hoping the uh, torso area right there would be pretty loose, but after uh, playing around with it, like I said, it's very solid. No parts has fallen off of me whatsoever. And you want to hear even more good news? Well, majority of the parts are actually undergated, so you don't have to deal with any numb marks whatsoever. So when I turn this around, as you can see, no numb marks whatsoever. Man, I really need to get a turntable. Well, anyways, if you're gonna display it out of box, I mean, it looks good, but with a little bit more effort, what I mean just a little more effort is that if you put the decals I showed you, pan align it, and top coat, it's gonna look better. And speaking of that, I will do that right now, and I'll see you guys later. And here is what the impulse looks like after you put the effort in. And I gotta say, it looks even better than before. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that there are no seam lines to take care of whatsoever. And to me, that makes my work a lot easier if I'm gonna do something as simple as that. But if I'm going to do a full paint job on this one, which usually in real grades, I don't usually give it like a complete like paint job, but maybe someday in the future I will. And if it counts, I have weathered a few RG kits, but we're not here to talk about that. Anyways, let's go over the accessories. First, we'll start off the beam rifle, and I already have the right trigger finger attached to it. And the beam rifle actually looks pretty nice. You have a hinge right over here, and the little handle moves side to side. And this little red piece, as I was like, building the uh, kit, I almost lost it. Now that is a red part, not red paint. So once again, when you're dealing with uh, real grades, you're dealing with very small parts. And I also did paint the uh, silver bits here and right over here. Next, we have the shield. Now on my copy, it is a little tough to open up, but once you do open it, you open it like this, like that, pull these white bits out. And here you go. And you can attach it in either arm. As for hand options, as you can see, I already have the uh, closed fist on it. And you already saw the right trigger finger hand. You have two of the weapon holding hands. If you look closely, you'll see there's a little peg on it to hold the beam sabers. Two of the open palm hands. And another holding weapon holding hand, but with no peg in it. Here we have the silhouette flyer, which you can use 
its backpack to attach these little holes right here. And this part moves back like that. And these black parts right here, I painted that. Two little missiles that you can attach to the core splinter, which I will show you later on in this review. Landing gear parts, which also goes to the core splinter. Two beam to effect parts, which you can attach to these handles right over here. And if you want to use it, you can just take out the handle like this. And attach it like that. And there you go. And you have these two adapter pieces, which you can use to connect to the action base stand. The small one I can show you for the transformation, while the other one you can use it to attach underneath the uh, Impulse Gundam for its uh, flight pose or aerial pose. But I have also forgot to mention that it's, this is also part of the transformation as well. And last but not least, a 1144 scale of the pilot himself, Shin Asuka. Now I didn't really paint this guy up, all I did is a pen light to show you the details of the pilot figure and it actually looks pretty nice. As for articulation goes, you're gonna be a little surprised. Let me just take this backpack off to make it a little bit easier on me. All right, and let's go over the articulation. As for the head goes, right here it's on a hinge joint and a ball joint. As for the arm, you can swing it out like that and bring it forward, which is pretty nice and this shoulder pad can move up and this right here can move ever slow slightly and the arm can move up that far so bicep sword right over here double joint on the elbow and there's a rotation on the forearm and the wrist is on the ball joint for the torso, there is no ab crunch, but it is made up for it. That you can move it up like that. And there's a waist swivel right over here. And you can rock side to side like that. As for the waist, one thing I forgot to mention on the accessories that if you can pull this down right here, which is ooh, can be a little tough, you can actually bring out the knife. All right, just give me a sec. Oh, there we go. And you can switch it out like that. Back to your articulation. The waist can move up that far. The side skirt can move out that far. And the back skirt can move out that far. And you can even make it go out just ever so slightly. Leg can move up that far and back that far. And check this out. Now, if you can bring the legs down right here and you bring it forward, that's gonna make your articulation on the, on the hips even better. And while it's still down there, you can do the full splits. Now, if I bring it back up, the leg's gonna move out that far. Double joint on the knee, which has some pretty nice armor separation right over here. And let me just bring it back up. And let me show you it one more time. And there you go. And for the thrust it behind the leg, it can move up and down. And of course, who wouldn't forget a thigh swirl right over here. Now, moving on to the foot articulation. Now, this part over here is on a ball joint, even though it barely moves. The toe can move down like that, which is pretty nice. I think it is part for the transformation. As for the ankle, the pivot is actually pretty nice. And of course, it's on a rotation as well. So moving back on the torso part, one more thing I forgot to show you is that usually in real grades, or in fact, all real grades do have an opening cockpit. If you get a toothpick, you can open it just like that. Oh, and this part does move and it's on the hinge as well, which is also part of the transformation, I believe. Hey, as for the backpack, there's a ball joint right over here. It's a ball joint right over here. And the wings can flap back that far. And there's a ball joint right over here. And as for the thrusters in the back, it can move down and down. Going back to this part of the backpack, flip this 
out and you get up. Better yet, use a toothpick. You get a little hidden thruster if you look closely right up here. Overall, the articulation is really great. You can pull off some dynamic pulses on this kit. And speaking of poses, let's move on to that right now. Now, remember I showed you the uh, forearm rotation during the articulation? The good part is, is that when you attach the shield, you can have the option of putting it on the side or below. So that's actually really neat, so you don't need to have an adapter or anything. Okay, so here it is on an aerial pose. Now, I know the action base stand is in a wonky position, but at least it works. Because if I try to adjust it, it's gonna fall off. As you can see right here, I do need a new background. One thing I forgot to tell you about the shield is that you can move this handle part right out. And which allows for this kind of hand, the one with no peg inside of it, to hold it. But I find it's like a little useless because I feel like the shield will just like flop around. So I think it's a little unnecessary. And as for this pose, it kind of surprised me because I expect it to be a little back heavy, but check this out. It's not touching the ground. Okay, and one last pose before I show the flight gimmick. He can even pull off a kneeling pose, and to make it even better, he holds the knife. And I gotta say, I'm actually really proud of this. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the flight gimmick, and I'm gonna do it this one at a time. At first, you take this four silhouette, extend this piece out, and you can use this backpack. Attach it like so. If it cooperates on camera. And there you go. And you can just pull these wings back. Right? And bring the beam saber handles forward. Okay, that's one down. For the chest flyer, you're gonna to have to detach the upper torso. Just like that. There you go. And the legs fell. Now for this one, you gotta attach the uh, shield and the beam rifle in. So first I will collapse the shield. And I already closed the uh, white bits from the side. Okay, and take this part. Got to drop like that. Bring it up so it covers the face so you can bring the head down. Take this part, swing the arm out like that. Rotate it, bring it forward. And swivel the bicep like that. Do the same thing for the other side. Bring it forward. Now as for the shield, you're gonna bring this down. Use the forearm rotation. And I believe you rotate the shield forward. And that is how you do the chest flyer. And don't forget to attach this piece onto the back, like so. As for the core splendor, so you take this part out, take the wings out. Now I already painted these uh, parts blue. Take these out, flip the red out like this, pull the core splendor out, adjust it, and bring the nose cone out. And I paint this part black. And this is what the corresponder is. And this is when the landing gear and the missiles I showed you earlier, you can take this part, attach it through here. The long ones goes onto the side like so. All right. And for the missiles, attach this peg right here. And you can see this little slot right over here.
Alright. Just like that. Okay, and as for the legs, you bring this part right up here. Bring this part of the leg. Hold on. Or it's supposed to look like that. And you do the same for the other side. Bring the toes down. All right, and you take this adapter piece and you put this right between the legs. Like so. And there you go. All right, and once it's all done, you can attach them all into an action base stand, except for the course bundler, because I don't have another one, but I'm just gonna put this stand down there. You can all have them wishing around. Now, I have to admit, it's a really neat gimmick, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna like display it as this from now on. This may be like the first and last time I'll ever do this. But if you really like what you see, you can display it like that. It's your model kit, you can display it however you want. All right, time for me to put this thing back together and jump on to the size comparisons. Before I do that, one more thing I forgot to point out about the uh, correspondent right there. Um, usually, this part right here is supposed to be all black, but instead I decided to paint this little detail instead. Now, there's supposed to be a bits of yellow on the um, these fins right here, but I kind of got a little lazy, but let's just face it. Um, it I'm just going to hide it. And there's like no point of me painting this, so yeah. All right, and now it's time for a size comparison. So here he is with the standard size RX-72. Now, the impulse Gundam is 18.4 meters, while the standard RX-72 is 18 meters. I think the scaling is just about right with the uh, impulse Gundam being a little bit taller with the RX-72. Okay, let me just put this to the side. And here is the Destiny Gundam. Now, I only have the HG version, not the RG, but the, it is from the same anime f as the uh, Impulse Gundam. And as you can see, it is a little back heavy, but just give me one second. Whew, okay, after all that fixing, sorry for the uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. But anyways, as you can see, the Impulse Gundam and a Destiny Gundam, they are roughly the same height. I mentioned already, even though this is an RG kit, while this is an HG kit, they still look pretty good together. Okay, final thoughts. As you can see, it's a great kit. I mean, need I say more? Because I'm gonna repeat myself if I talk about how great it is. I mean, I highly recommend this kit, and yeah, I know you're dealing with very small parts, but you just have to give it a chance. It's a really solid real grade. I never built the high grade, well, I mean by the high grade, I meant the modern one, not the old one, and I also never built the master grade, so I can't make an opinion on those. And if you ever did build them, let me know in the comments. Tell me about your experience. All right, and that about wraps up the review. If you ever make it this far, thank you guys for watching. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you want to see more reviews. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Guys, I think it's time to say farewell to the old background. This thing has been holding up for two years. As you can see all the wear and tear. So it's time for me to get an upgrade. So farewell, old friend.